Shalom. Today we're going to talk about Christmas. This is a spoiler alert. This presentation has the capability of changing your mind about some things you might believe. So some people celebrate because they think it was when Jesus was born. What's the evidence from the Bible? Luke 2.8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Shepherds in the Holy Land do not keep their flocks out at night in the winter. It is too cold. This is a practice for the spring or fall. So why is Christmas celebrated in midwinter? This date was fixed by the Catholic Church in the early 4th century because it is associated with the winter solstice. The winter solstice was previously known as the birthday of Sol Invictus, the Invincible Sun. This was part of sun worship. Nearly every pagan religion has a sun god who was born on or around the winter solstice. The word of God says, Lest you lift up your eyes unto heaven, and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, should be driven to worship them and serve them, which Jehovah your God has divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. So we ought not to worship the sun. So when was Jesus actually born? There are some hints in the scripture. In Haggai 2, 18 and 19, Consider now, from this day and upward, from the fourth and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of Jehovah's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the wine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree have not brought forth. From this day I will bless you. This prophecy is given at the beginning of the season of the Feast of Dedication. It's the 24th day of the ninth month, which is the day before Hanukkah begins. It's a festival of lights, and you know that is mentioned in John chapter 10. What about the light? John 8:12. Then spake Yeshua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of life. So we have a shadow picture of perhaps the conception of Yeshua. The foundation for the temple is laid. The seed is in the barn. The bun is in the oven, but it has not yet produced. Nine months after Hanukkah is the festival of tabernacles. We know that the word was made flesh and dwelt. That means he tabernacled among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. There is another calculation which can be made from the scripture. In Luke 1, 5, we read, There was, in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Aviah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So now we are looking at the parents of John the baptizer. What do we know about the course of Aviah? David set up the courses, and they're listed in First Chronicles 24. The seventh is Hakoz, and the eighth is Aviyah. So Zacharias belonged to the eighth course. There were 24 courses of priests, each serving twice a year, while all the priests served during the three pilgrimage festivals. This would cover the 354 to 356 day Jewish calendar. The Jewish calendar is a very complex subject. I will send you to another video if you want to understand it. But basically, we are looking at a 51-week year. And eventually, after some years, they catch it up by adding a month. But if the courses begin at the start of the biblical year, which is the month of Passover, then the eighth course would occur shortly after Pentecost, Luke 1, 26, 27. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The messenger continues and says, Behold, your cousin Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. And so we see that John would have been born around Passover. He is conceived after Pentecost, the cousins are six months apart, as you see. Mary is receiving the message that she will become pregnant, and Elizabeth is in her sixth month. And so, again, Yeshua would have been born at Tabernacles. But in fact, does any of this matter? 
Of all the festivals of Yehovah, there is no commandment to celebrate any birthday. In fact, there are only two birthdays mentioned in the whole Bible. Genesis 40, 20. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler, and he restored him to his position. And he lifted up the head of the chief baker and took it off his body. And Mark 6.21, And when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee. And we know that it is at this supper that John the Baptist loses his head. So I don't recommend going to birthday parties for tyrannical despots. In fact, in all the reading of all the Gospels and all the teaching of Paul, we do not see anyone actually celebrating Yeshua's birthday. If it was important to be a holiday, surely the apostles would have celebrated it. God gives us this warning in Deuteronomy 12. Take heed to yourself that you be not snared by following them, that is the pagan nations that they have put out of the land, after that they be destroyed from before you, and that you inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so, I will do likewise. You shall not do so unto Jehovah your God, for every abomination to Jehovah, which he hates, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to other gods. We are not supposed to do the observances of false gods. Remember that this day, this winter solstice, 25th of December day, is a day that is dedicated to observance of the sun. There are many traditions among many people concerning the celebration of Christmas. I will just leave you with this one scripture of pagan idol worship, Jeremiah 10, 3-4. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. The fact is, you cannot put Christ back in Christmas he was never there to start with. Yehovah warns us against the mixing of the holy and the profane. Leviticus 19.19 19, You shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your cattle gender with a diverse kind. You shall not sow your field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and wool come upon you. Again, Deuteronomy 22.9 You shall not sow your vineyard with diverse seeds. Lest the fruit of your seed, which you have sown, and the fruit of your vineyard be defiled. You shall not plow with an ox and an ass together. You shall not wear a garment of diverse sorts, as of wool and linen together. And all these prohibitions are grounded in reality. If you mix a horse and a donkey, you can get a mule, but it proves by its existence it's not fertile. If you plant all your sweet peppers right next to all your hot peppers, you will have no sweet peppers because they will crossbreed. If you have a garment that is threads of wool and linen, the wool has a much higher tensile strength, and so it will rub against the linen and wear it out, and you will have holes in your garment. If you try and plow with two different animals, they will not cooperate. They will be going in different directions. Your furrows of your farm will be all wavy and crooked. We are to separate the things that are to be separated. Ezekiel 22, 26. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. We are made in the image of God. We are to present his image to the world. Ezekiel 44, 23. And they shall teach my people, the priests, the difference between the holy and profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. I hope you can see that there is a difference between the holidays that Jehovah calls us to observe and how to observe them, and the holidays that the world celebrates, and how they observe them. We are to be a separate and set-apart people. Until next time, keep your eyes on the sky, not to worship the sun, but to look for the one who is coming, Yeshua the Messiah, returning to take the rightful possession of 
the planet. Shalom.